Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk through decision making in games. So that is primarily for players. So getting players to read the game in context and understand what their options are for action. So really it's providing a base level of context for players. So oftentimes you'll get a player that might recognize one or two stimulus. Obviously the more uh, experienced they are, the more stimulus stimuli they'll begin to recognize. So taking them through a list of questions here um, in kind of a classroom session can make them aware of what they need to recognize whenever they're playing the game. So we'll talk through each of these with a little example as we go. So first off, context is key. Where are you on the pitch? So I've put a little dot on the pitch to show where the player is. So we're saying they're midway in the opponent's half, wide on the right flank. Simplest thing that probably all players will be able to easily recognize and probably most players will use um, decision-making processes focused primarily on this, where are you on the pitch? What is your role? So I've said that this is a right midfielder used in a high pressing team with defensive duties in the attacking third. They're used as an outlet player that stays high and wide when our team is defending in the mid and defensive thirds. So you could expect yourself to probably be in the opponent's half for the majority of the game. If you're not expected to track back and defend in your own half, you're used as that outlet player staying high and wide. Um, that gives you a little bit more of an idea of where the risks and where the rewards might lie and what the actual expectations of you are from your team and your coach. Where are the opponents? They're primarily inside and ahead of me. So I have one opponent applying pressure from behind and I have two opponents staying high, limiting my backwards options. So you can kind of see um, if I were to play the ball back to a central defender, I'd have to play a through ball back to a central defender or I'd maybe have to wait for a midfielder to show inside. Um, either way, it looks like I'm going to have to break lines. As shown here. So where are your teammates is the next question. So many are on the defender's blind side. Uh, there's one obvious and clear passing lane down the flank but most teams, teammates are on the weak side of the pitch. So as I just mentioned, if I wanted to release the pressure and play it back, it would have to be a through ball between those two orange forward players back to my centre back, or I'd have to expect another player to step out, presumably my right back, to come in front of that player perhaps and show support. But really the shape that this scenario is taking is lending itself to playing that ball down the flank. Where are, Where is the ball? We're in possession, I have the ball. So then ultimately it comes down to this. What are the risks versus rewards? So the risk is we lose possession high and wide. There could be counter attacks. The rewards, maintaining possession, we dribble or pass in the final third, close to the goal, the score, or perhaps we draw a foul and maintain possession uh, through some kind of free kick or maybe even a penalty. So really putting that all together in what we know, you're on the right flank of the final third with the ball as an attacking right mid, with an opponent applying pressure from behind and one closing down from inside. So that opponent applying pressure from behind means you've got to speed up your decision making, right? Or you've got to hold them off, keep your body between the player and the ball kind of thing. You see one clear passing option down the line. This isn't a risky space if you should lose the ball, but you stand to get a goal if you can keep the ball and play it into a danger area. A penetrating pass or ball will rely on teammates understanding your vision and a difficult pass execution by making runs onto the ball behind the last line. There are options to combine if teammates can read your intentions. So right here, we probably open it up for discussion with the player, players and kind of ask, okay, what are some things you would expect of this player on the ball right now, knowing what you do? And obviously there aren't any wrong answers or right answers. It's just opening that up, telling them, okay, you've got multiple options. Can you think of some right off the top of your head right now? If they're more present at forefront of mind, more likely that you're actually going to execute that in the future. And it might even seem familiar to you if you find yourself in a fairly similar position. Obviously it's not going to be an exact replica, but the more we can expose players to, the more likely they're going to be to be able to actually recall something and go with it, pick in an option that they're comfortable with. So you might also consider the coach's preference and the team philosophy. So it'll determine what you actually coach as a coach. So this really isn't a slide for the players right now, it's a slide for the coaches. 
So you'll talk them through technique, skills, positioning, team shape, movement. And ultimately, this small presentation is about options and getting them to recognize options. So an example of what you could do, you might choose in the beginning or depending on the level of your team. So say you're getting with in Ontario, you've got the OPDL, say you're getting a first time U13 OPDL team, they might not have the capacity right now to necessarily walk through, talk through the rationale behind all the decisions that they could make. So what you could do is provide them with a set of examples and leave something like at the end here, put unscripted, something unscripted. So you could say, hold off the opponent and carry the ball inside. We know that player is coming on the back of us. And then it opens up a larger conversation. If you choose to do that and carry the ball inside, what are you going to come up with next? You can see it's pretty well covered by orange players. So you're going to have to be quite skillful in attracting those players, or maybe that's your plan. You're attracting the players to release the ball. These are all kind of conversations that you'll have with the player and they'll begin to understand and possibly recognize. Quickly play a pass down the line, then support. Again, opens up the conversation. If I play that pass, where do I want to support? What might happen to that player? Are they going to get closed down by this player? Am I going to be tracked by the player who's currently putting pressure on my back? Lots of additional questions you can ask to kind of flow the conversation. Quickly play a cross into the box. Use the opponent's momentum to turn them and create some time and space to make the next decision or something completely unscripted. So really, this is a conversation you probably would like to do in small groups. Sometimes it works to just open up for a kind of a classroom session and let the whole room kind of discuss what they're seeing. And that allows people to challenge one another. Uh, really depends on the makeup of your group and how kind of mentally resilient they are. So kind of a final summary, you need to know these first six items before you know what you need. So you need to know where you are, what is your role, where are the opponents, where are your teammates, where's the ball, and what are the risks and rewards in that particular part of the field. So really you could lay it out throughout your season plan or whatever it might be. You could lay out the risks and rewards for being in possession, out of possession, uh, positive or negative transition in the various parts of the pitch. So players begin to be, get familiar. Some of them are just common sense. Like if you have a negative transition inside your own defensive third, uh, right in the central channel, you're probably massively <laughs> risky. That's probably the biggest risk that there can be. And what real reward is there to playing around there? So some of it is obviously very kind of obvious, but to open it up for discussion, to make it really clear to players what the risks and rewards that you as a coach see and in your game model, what kind of leeway are you giving to players who are seeking out the reward part? So these are all related. Um, so where are you related to teammates, to the ball, to the opponents um, on the pitch? And then those two other kind of questions, what's your role and what are the risks and rewards? And that will lead you to kind of making a decision so we're saying, what is your role? So those are tasks that you as a player are responsible for. Um, what are the risks and rewards? Which tasks are worth it? Or which tasks are too dangerous? And then it all kind of culminates in this decision. So sometimes, depending on the group you've got, your players might get a bit overwhelmed at this, but they become quite comfortable over time because really it's four location questions, yourself, opponents, teammates, and ball which are kind of fundamental. And we're usually taught these early coach education. This is like what you need to know. And to be honest, if more players had gone through coach education, I feel like they would have a far better grasp. And I understand that uh, coach education is so we can filter the information down, but that's exactly what this is doing. It's filtering some of that information down and preparing players. So they might actually be able to make an informed and comfortable decision. So kind of laying it out here, a task you might choose to do with your players would be to select a game to watch and pick a particular player to observe, probably a player who has a similar role and set of tasks to you within kind of a known game model and system of play. Make notes about what you see as that player's responsibilities in different moments of the game using that framework that we outlined. So you might choose to go through 
the four locations, the tasks, the risks versus rewards when you're in possession in a certain portion of the pitch. So it's kind of building off what we just suggested. And you might choose to do this multiple times over. And before the end of the season, your players have actually kind of developed this risk versus reward map for you. Um, obviously, there will be exceptions. So if you've got a player that roams or a player that's kind of outside the scope of your typical system of play parameters, they would probably hold an exception. But it's important to recognize um, these items. And really, it's helpful to have the players create this kind of stuff for you because there's a lot more buy-in and empowerment. So based on a scenario, so the location of player, opponents, teammates and the ball, find out what is the player's role, what options were available and what they chose to do. So you can send this away as homework, you can do it in a group setting. Probably better to start it as homework so the players can actually take some free shots, see, break the game down to its most basic level. And then asking what made the player successful or unsuccessful. And again, this is not about right or wrong answers. It's purely get the players to have a look to see just how much they understand. And if they have additional ideas on top of what you as a coach might already think is the right answer. So I hope this helps. I hope you have success in walking your players through this and get a little bit out of it.